Hello guys, gals, and MBs. Let's start exploring this fluid-like motion with particles. It's a very basic fluid sim. It is heavily inspired by this TOX, by Joseph Peltz. His system is a lot better than mine, and a lot of fun to play with. So check it out, and maybe download it and play around with it. But this one is a little different, and I encourage you to play around with both of these. But let's get started on making this one. First, let's just drop down a noise top. And we need to set our resolution for that. So let's use a constant chop. Call it res, and set it to 1280. We are going to work in a square, because that's just so much easier. Drag and drop that in the noise. And set the pixel format to 32-bit float red and green. Monochrome off. And connect this to a null, called POS. Let's start rendering this with an add SOP, add points, a convert SOP, convert to particles per point, a geometry comp, a camera, a constant material, drag that to the geo, and a render top. Let's use this POS to instance our points. And let's just use the red and green channel for X and Y respectively. Connect it to a null, and let's look at this. Let's make sure our render has the same resolution as our noise, so let's drag and drop this. In the view of the camera, let's set it to orthographic, and the ortho width to 1. And bottom left. Now, what we want to do, is to check for the density of particles every frame, and if there are many particles close together, we want them to disperse. Move away from each other. This is the main technique I'm stealing from Mr. Peltz. I'm gonna set my noise to random. Let's also drop down a feedback here, so we are updating the positions every frame. A keyboard in to reset it. Let's assign the POS to that feedback top. Now, let's connect a null to this render. and call it density. A constant top down here. Zero it out. And let's set it to 32-bit float red and green. Drag and drop the res. Copy paste this feedback but let's reference the density null to it. Let's connect a slope to it. Zero point to zero. And the vertical green. Blue zero. And let's also make sure that this pixel format is 32-bit float red and green. Add this to the positions. And yeah, that's the type of chaos we would expect. First, we need to remap it to our positions. A remap top, and plug the feedback into the second input. 
We also want to put a blur before the slope. With a pre-shrink of 2 and a filter size of 20, it is collapsing inward. Let's make it expand by changing the slope to a negative value. I realize I forgot to set the pixel format of the render. We only need one channel, so let's set it to 32-bit float monochrome. Yeah, neat. Let's also put down a blur after the slope. With a pre-shrink of 2 and a filter size of 20. We get this. If we set the extend mode in the remap to repeat, we get some weird edge action. So let's also set the extend mode of our blurs to repeat. We now have our diffusion in place. Let's drop down a noise. I'm connecting it to the constant, so I don't have to set the resolution again. Monochrome off, offset 0. Connect it to a math. And let's multiply this by 0.001. Add it to the density map. And let's animate this a little. A limit top at the end of the loop. Set it to loop. Minimum 0, maximum 1. Now we can add a point transform to the positions before the limit and control the movement of the particles. And with the seconds input of the point transform, we can mask what particles we want to be affected. Let's copy paste this constant and connect a ramp to it. Under output, set resolution only. Let's make it circular. Shape it like this, and connect it to the second input. And oh no, it didn't work. That's because we need to remap it to our current positions. Remap top, and put the add in the second input. Nice. The point transfer top is only affected by the bright areas of our second input. But let's also rotate density vectors. Put down a point transform after the second blur. Change the input type to vector. And let's rotate these bad boys something like 85 degrees. We get these spinners that are fun, but very intense. But by making some changes in the first blur, we can smooth those out. Yeah.
Now, I'm gonna add a noise to the color as well. But keep in mind, that any change you make to the color of the particles will affect the movement of the system. It is a delicate ecosystem. But just for fun, let's add a noise top. And a null. And instance these as colors. And we only have one channel. You can move this around with the point transform. And the fun part about this system is that it can handle really high resolutions. Even at 1920 by 1920, it runs at 60 frames per second. Even at 2160, it runs fine. You can change the ramp, or use any monochrome input here, to affect the flow speed. I hope you have a lot of fun with this. I've absolutely had a lot of fun with this. Oh right, as a treat, I'll show you how you a simple way you can interact with a mouse. A circle top. Let's connect it to the constant to get the resolution. A mouse and chop. Connect it to the center parameters of the circle. Let's bring the radius down and also assign the radius to the softness. Connect this to a slope. 0, 0.0 Green is vertical luminance. Blue is 0. And let's just add these right here.
Now the slope is grabbing the particles, pulling them inwards. Let's invert the slope so it is more of a repeller. And like this you can interact with it. Have fun my friends. If you like these tutorials, consider supporting me on Patreon. All the wonderful people there are the ones that make these tutorials possible. Cheers!